Me, 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 me. Uh, late nights of messing with AI got me going crazy. But let's show you a couple cool things. <laughs> I have stable diffusion. Go look it up. I have stable diffusion hooked up with control net. And so I'm taking a, and that probably means nothing to you, but we'll show you what it does. Um, I'm taking a vector line drawing from a model that's a little bit blasted. Um, I didn't do this model, someone else's model. And I'm just gonna clean it up in Photoshop real quick. So give me two seconds on that. And I'll discuss why we're cleaning it up on Photoshop. Um, Stable Diffusion AI based on trained models and then Control Net is going to take the shape of this vector line and use that as a control for the model in AI, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I've been in it for so many hours that I doubt it makes sense to anybody outside of my own brain. <laughs> so, But I'll show you because maybe showing you is a really easy way of, of you know, figuring this out for people. So um, I'm just gonna clean up, instead of fixing the model itself, since we're just trying to get some really quick looks here, I'm just gonna clean up a bunch of the lines that came from um, Chief Architect because the model is a little goofy and so the vector lines show up a little bit goofy, right? So we're gonna clean those up. And when we clean those up, then we get better results. So again, I've been pushing this, but it really is helpful if you're in the rendering game or visual arch viz game to know Photoshop because it can save you a bunch of time and effort. So, actually we're gonna leave that line. I do want this facade to be starting about right there. I think this whole lower half of this entry is brick. And actually the whole lower half of this building is gonna be brick on this um, entry area. And then um, I think this is all like kind of a stone facade here. So bear with me. We're not showing you a ton of stuff right now. This is just, just a little bit of cleanup, but we'll see the end result. That's the fun part. That back and then we're going to have a little division here. And I think that this will be the division. There you go. So that's all going to be brick down here. Hopefully, we'll see. Now the thing about the AI stuff is it's you're kind of um, kind of fighting it and coaxing it at the same time, and it is a, a learned skill to learn how to train it to do what you want. So even though these lines are going to define what's happening in the building, they also become restriction for the model. Um, so you got to kind of work with that. So I think this is good enough. Uh, the only thing I'm going to change is uh, the AI-based models, um, if you want f speed and efficiency, you really want to knock this down to 512 by 512 resolution, which is super low, right? So let's just do that. That was a quick little cleanup. So this is going to be our 512 by 512, right about there. Okay, and we'll just export this. I need to get the screen out of my way. My keyboard. All right, so JPEG, you see it's 1624 resolution by 1624. We're gonna knock that down and we're gonna lose a bunch of little details here. Actually, before I do that, let's look at this garage real quick. We need to knock out some of these lines real quick too. We're gonna make this a contemporary style home and it's anything but right now is the end goal. So we're just gonna knock out some of these lines. It's easy for me to cross the whole expanse here. There we go. And then switch it back and Give me just a center, maybe a center divide. No, we're just gonna leave it like this. Okay, let's export it. Let's 
we go. I just overwrote what I had already. And so let's kick this over. Now I've done this model once already, so you're gonna see this in just a second. Look at that. Look at that. That's what it ends up looking like. Isn't that cool? Well, my swing arms are fighting each other over here. I got a new setup, new desk setup. All right, so we said we did a really simple prompt, but we're gonna change that prompt. And so this is Stable Diffusion and Control Net. And again, I don't think I need to discuss with you how this works, um, other than I'm gonna load up this picture that we just did. That's all cleaned up. And let me get into where that even was. Let's see. That's it, but you know what? I didn't change the resolution. Let's uh, fix that. I did not knock this down. 512 by 512. On my second screen right now. One second. Oh no, it was correct. Where are we not seeing it? Where am I exporting it? Probably somewhere I can't find it. Send in delete. Ah, that's where. So here we go. There we go, bam. So we are going to, in this is the, the control net aspect of stable diffusion. If you're not familiar, um, again, I don't know that this means anything to someone until you've gotten into using this, but um, what I'm telling it to do is invert this so that it's black and white image over here, okay? And then it's using a model, a trained model called Canny. And, um, and that's how it interprets what these lines are. And so that's gonna give it definition. And I'm gonna say that the weight of this definition is a little low, one being um, right on the money, and 0.65 is that, you know, we're gonna let the AI model kind of interpret some things, which is good. We're gonna get more of a realistic shot from that. And then um, we'll change my scale to 512, 512 again. And the sampling steps are just how, basically, how realistic we could get this is the higher the sampling steps, is my interpretation of that. It's not, it's not quite right. There's a, there's a big algorithm to that. But what's important to note is that I prefer my sampling steps be higher on the most part. Uh, lower sampling steps are kind of like conceptual design, which is great. Um, but if I did my job right and I, and I really detailed this model that I, the way that I wanted to, I should get some pretty good results by increasing the sampling steps. And then, so let me input a prompt. So let's see, um, okay. Contemporary house mixed with uh, traditional elements of Spanish influence, uh, Southern America architecture, I'm, I'm not even gonna be specific here. Um, <laughs> I gotta delete that part. And use earth tones with some terracotta elements. So funny. Delete that part. All right. So let's what uh, let's see what this comes up with when we just hit generate. And it's gonna be a couple of minutes. Talk, talk amongst, you, amongst yourselves. And you see it kind of taking shape on the screen. Now you see what happened with changing the, um, that sliding scale of control weight. You know, it, it got to do a little bit of interpretation on the building. It added an, ad, in, uh, I can't talk. It added, added an addition. I said it. It added an addition. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Look at that. Oh, it added a turret as well. <laughs> but the important part is here, which is that we wanted just to, to get some look and feel, to get some new ideas. This is for idea generation, that's it. So now let's see what happens when we take the control weight back up to one. And I mean, we could do this in stages, but let's just, just pop this out. And I wanna change the model that I was using. I was using something called Dream Shaper. And Dream Shaper is a trained model, okay? And it's trained based on a subset of data. 
And Dream Shaper in particular isn't supposed to be for, you know, realistic looking architectural design. Whereas we've got a new model here called Realistic Vision. So actually, let's try Realistic Vision at that lower control weight and see what happens. And keep in mind, this is a very rudimentary beginner entry level approach to this particular set of tools. Uh, we can get way more advanced than this. So um, because you see here, we've got a bunch of sliders. We've got a bunch of additional information we've, we can be using. We've got um, sampling methods we can be changing. We've got, uh, um, we haven't even got into picking a particular seed, which is, um, think of that as um, an, an iteration that can be true over and over again. So it's using, you know, a certain interpretation of, of your prompts the same way over and over again. So, um, so again, with that, that sliding control weight, we can see here that we got another addition, <laughs> but not a turret this time. <laughs> this is looking very stately. And it's and it's taken that Spanish uh, influence note very strong. So um, we can do weighting where we kind of change our weights, and it might be that we don't want to have Spanish influence. Maybe we just want that contemporary. So um, I'm going to say Spanish influence with white stucco mixed with earth tones. But let's see what it comes up with anyways. Ah, wow. All right. So this time around, let's pump this up. I'm going to pump it up to like 0.8. You know, and, and what that's going to do is it's going to maybe miss a few, you know, of these lines or it's play around with the lines as, as parameters, meaning it can go outside of the box, if you will. Um, and so I did miss a detail here. What was it? Oh, that we wanted a brick. White stucco mixed with earth tones. The lower half of the building incorporates brick. Mix in some terracotta elements. Bam. And let's turn the sampling steps down. That's going to in, um, increase the speed of this. Now, let me talk a little bit about my system while we're waiting. I am running an AMD laptop. It's kind of a tricked out system right now. Running an AMD laptop that is, um, has a 6950 or 6850. It's a Legion 7. And it's pumping through an eGPU that has an AMD 7900 XDX in it. When I got this, I was really impressed about how fast it was, snappy it was. And that's mainly because it's got the DDR5 and it's using um, PCI4 lanes and a bunch of memory and all that stuff. Just super snappy. And the 7900 XTX worked pretty well. In fact, in some applications that could utilize all three graphics cards that are now in this machine, eGPU and two internals, and one of them has ray trace capabilities, uh, the, the dedicated has ray trace capabilities as well as the NVIDIA card that's on there. Um, anyways, uh, some of the AI-based photo manipulation stuff can use all three graphics cards, which was making it a lot faster than my desktop with a 4090 in it. But for just using this in programs like Chief Architect, ray tracing wasn't as quickly as quick as my 4090, and, and it shouldn't be, right? But... And AMD keeps putting out new driver packages that are speeding it up. And it's crazy how fast it is now. Um, anyways, we'll get into that in another video. Check this one out, out though. It's actually looking pretty good. I like it a lot. <laughs> like, it did a pretty good job. Now, keep in mind, you're not going to go present this as a rendering, right? but it's good for conceptual ideas. And it's specific to the architecture of the home that I provided. So that's, that's pretty spot on. Now, it uses a random seed every time I press this, but 
I can go pick up that last seed if I want to continuously improve that particular rendering. I'm not going to do that. Let's just do a random seed. But we're going to improve the same. Actually, no, that's not true. Let's do that. So I want to open up the folder that this exists in. Okay. And then I'm going to check out this. I, I had it do a... I had realistic vision just to check the model do a um, a blue fairy <laughs> um, with ears for wings. And one of them was like creepy accurate. Like that is just, that's bonkers. Like what is that? <laughs> okay, so that's someone's poor kid with wings on their ears. <laughs> All right, so this is the seed number this second half here, okay? So I'm gonna take that copy, bam. I'm gonna take that as a copy. And then we'll, in the seed, we're gonna paste that. And I'm going to improve the sampling steps and we'll just see what it comes up with. It's gonna take a little longer. So the machine, back to this. Got a laptop. It's actually mounted under my desk. And I did that because I also mounted underneath that a twin 120 millimeter fan, which means that that thing's staying cool and it's not very loud. It's actually really quiet, even when it's throttling. So that's cool. And then the eGPU, there's a bunch of cool stuff that this is doing. eGPU right now is obviously handling this AI stuff. The Internal cards are handling the stream. So they're set up to handle different tasks, which makes it really nice for me. Up until the CPU starts throttling, where then we get some lag. Otherwise, the stream looks pretty good, even though we're fully utilizing our hardware. If we go take a look at our monitor here. Well. There we go. Yeah, GPU 3, 100%, look at that. And then Radeon's at 33% doing the stream. So great implementation. I love AMD's metric data based out of this driver package. Um, it's very comprehensive. So it makes a lot of sense to me, tech guy. Okay, this is interesting. So we put in the same seed but it did some different things. That's funny. Huh. So we gave it more um, sampling steps and then it did go outside of the bounds of the building. So let's keep the same seed and set the control weight to one. And I'm gonna change the config scale down a little bit. So this kind of interprets the, the text prompt and image prompt is the config scale. So this again is giving it a little bit more freedom where we just took away freedom in terms of the bounds of the house. Now we want it to stay within, truly within the bounds of the vector line um, that we gave it, but we're gonna let it be a little bit more interpretive of the text. So we'll see what happens. And then once you kind of have your workflow down and you know how to use this system and use it well, um, it's easy enough to come in here and do batch processing where we don't pick a seed, we pick random seed, which would be negative one value in the seed. And then you do a batch of like eight or 20 or 30 and go walk away and have a drink. And you got 30 images and they're all gonna be a little bit different. Um, and so it's a fast, fast, fast way to get some ideas specific to the architecture of your project. You can go use Midjourney, but Midjourney doesn't stay within the bounds of, of the project. Like I can get ideas from Midjourney, but um, if I want some specific stuff here, this is the way to do it. And once the models that are being used, the trained models that are being used start to be, to be as good as Midjourney's models, then this is just what we're going to be doing. Um, yeah. So you can see here when we when we up the the control weight, we don't get as a realistic of a shot. 
That's the main thing that I've noticed, is I don't get a, a very realistic shot. So it's hard to visualize with this. I could have done this in Chief Architect in a couple seconds just by, you know, painting the walls, right? So, um, so there's a balance here. So I kind of like that 0.8. I really liked that lower sampling step, actually, in this case, which is counter to what I said earlier. And then all this is correct. The config scale, let's take the config scale up a little bit and let's do a batch. And just do a batch of like six sampling steps there. And we can even change the sampling method. We're gonna try a, a different one out. So, I just noticed my mic, oh, my mic thing does respond, cool. Hopefully you could hear me this whole video. Yeah, it's changing that control weight down. There's that big problem where we're getting that addition again. It's almost like I want to put like huge, big, big lines in the in the source image just to make it so that it doesn't do any kind of addition. But you know, you can always crop this out in Photoshop and do what? We can use Photoshop's new gen fill. And I'm making this video right now, but this video is going to become obsolete in six months. That's the crazy thing about making videos for AI is it's going to be useless in no time. <laughs> okay, so it kept, this first one's keeping most of the model. Now, mind you, we're doing six right now, so we've got two minutes left to produce six images. And this all stores it in, in a local folder. So you really can just walk away and grab a batch of these and send them off, which is why I'm, I'm charging almost nothing to do this service, is I'll give it a prompt and you get what you get out of it. And it's just to, for idea generation. I think in the future though, this will be a lot better than just idea generation. We'll actually get some, some very usable stuff, maybe even usable elements. Thing I have not tried to do is take this into Photoshop, use uh, Photoshop's Gen AI to like make this a realistic looking rendering. And I might be able to do it. Sounds like a lot of work though. I have taken this into um, Topaz Labs, Photo AI, and upscaled the image and then done a small amount of editing in Photoshop and presented it. And, and that makes a better uh, presentation package. This is like unwrapping presents to me. Like, look, something's doing my work for me. <laughs> Funny, some of them change the perspective. It's clear that the perspective is, you know, on the left side of the building. And this one's like straight on, straight on shot. I wasn't counting, we got five or six. Next step is to get AI to just photo, to video edit these um, recordings for me. So I know it, it'd be really nice if I just skipped to the end, but I'm not gonna do that, sorry. <laughs> you gotta sit here and listen to me. All right, let's check out what we got. There's some really in interesting stuff in each one of these. You need to remove the prompt for Spanish in there because that's just, that's like a trigger word, I think. Take Spanish and just runs with it real quick. Because this isn't quite, I mean, it is kind of like contemporary Spanish, so. But it was supposed to be Spanish influenced. It didn't pick that up. It didn't understand that. It's got a ways to go. Once you can start talking to this, like if it had chat GPT incorporated where we get to talk it through its design iterations, then we could get something pretty crazy, which is essentially what we would do if we're trying to get this going with chat GPT. Let's try it real quick. 
since I have you. I'm using a plugin called Superpower Chat GPT. And let's start a conversation. We're going to use, we don't need to use the web browsing version. I pay for this, GPT or GPT Plus. See that? Okay. Let's do this. I want to describe a building that was originally built in the 70s in San Ramon, California with a Spanish influence style. It was built by some builders that came over from Southern America, kind of rural Texas area, or maybe even Austin, Texas area, and had their architectural influence brought over with them and integrated into this house. So I want to describe this house in the sense that we're going to be sending this to an AI model where we're going to remodel what this house looks like. And what we want this house to look like is that it's going to become a contemporary house that still honors its original architecture. Let's see what it comes up with. And I mean, I didn't, you know, I'm still very new at this, so I feel like um, I'm not immediately clear on what my directive is going to be when I approach this. Okay, so we're going to stop generating. Let's try this again. That was an awesome description. We want to shorten that substantially and direct it towards an AI model in terms of creating a prompt so that it does some image generation for us. So, oh, it got a little typo. Um, so I like the approach that we're just kind of having a conversation. I think that I get better results this way. Okay, now let's see. That was great. Now let's do a lot less focus on the Spanish influence because if we say too many trigger prompts using the word Spanish, the AI model will take that as an instruction base instead of a negative prompt. We only want to allude to the structure's origins, but really heavily focus on the contemporary aspect for the remodel. I <laughs> just put the word subtle in there. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, let's just try this, whatever. We're going to try this real quick. So we'll get back into stable diffusion. Close this out. We're going to send this batch count back down. And we're going to paste this in just like that was. And I don't think this is going to give me what I want. But eh, why not? Let's try it. Attempt one. Still see Spanish roofs. Subtle Spanish. Well, it did say terracotta roof. That was in there. Okay. Huh. Boy, that's, there's a $400,000 addition right there. <laughs> Second garage, mind you. <laughs> um, ah, funny, it took away the whole balcony area. That's kind of funny. Just see what happens when we, um, we're gonna do the random seed now. Oops, that was the recycled seed. Roll the dice, random seed, there we go. 
And let's pump this up to 0 0.9. And then try it again. And then that's probably the end of this video because I'm going to sit here playing with this all day and I got work to do. Um, yeah. This was just to show you what's coming around the corner. I think that's a pretty clean image, huh? I don't know. Again, massive addition, funny. And I can't wait for this to improve because it's exciting, right? It's just my biggest problem. I was a pretty decent artist growing up and my biggest problem was the kickoff. I needed an idea to start my work. And that was the biggest problem was I never had that. It was a lot of work to get that idea and I'd get frustrated. And so I just wouldn't draw. And mom, you know, wanted me to draw <laughs> late into my, into my teens. And I just kind of lost the interest in it. This is that kickstart is, it's just, it's enough to get me going. I see some stuff I like it, across all these and now I have some ideas for approach. It's great, and it's only gonna get better. So if you're not messing with this, maybe jump on it. It's very technical to set up, which is why there's a market for me for it. You know, if you want me to do it for you, yeah, I, I can do it. It's a small, nominal fee. But if you wanna know how to do this, jump on my Discord server. I just started a Discord server. It's meant to be a community hub. It's meant to give us a bunch of these tools. We have. We already have AI integrated into it. I'm considering taking night classes in Python scripting so I can build my own models. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. This video was really for a specific audience, which is people that already know me. I didn't really pose this as an you know in introduction to stable diffusion and AI and Photoshop workflow. You already know me. We already know what we're working with. We already know we might be working with Chief Architect, which we did. We work with Photoshop, which we did. And now we're working with this new stuff that we don't know. So just wanted to show you this. This is what the future is headed towards. So take interest. Come ask me questions. Thanks. Anybody just noticed that my like outro video was totally in the wrong spot? Oh, I got to go fix that. Anyways, see you later. <laughs>